It's, it's one o'clock straight away. Are we ready to go? We didn't even have time to warm up. Okay, well, welcome to art class. Are we good? Okay, well, I'm gonna get started and I'm super excited about today. We've got a really cool lesson and I hope that you see how it all ties in. This artist is well celebrated. You've probably seen some of his work. You might have studied him in school or been to museums where you've seen some of his pieces. Um, so I'm excited to start talking about that. I just want to remind everybody, if you would like to share any of your work from any of the art lessons, including today, and be part of our art show this weekend on Facebook and Instagram, if you will email it to makepaducah at yahoo.com and just make sure you give me your permission, especially if there's pictures of your cute kids and yourself and anyone else in there. So you can just email those pictures to me and we're gonna try and get as many of those in as we can. And then let's get ready for our lesson. So today we are talking about Vincent Van Gogh, particularly a very specific painting you might see it over here. It's called Starry Night. But what was neat about this piece is this is coming later in his life. In fact, what's really neat, Tate's over here waiting. Vincent Van Gogh and Tate share a birthday. Vincent Van Gogh's birthday was this week. Did you know that? Yeah. No, on Monday, March 30th. And if he was here with us, he would have been 167 years old. Wow, that would have been a lot of candles on a cake. So, it's his birthday this week, so all very appropriate to share with him. He also, he was born in the Netherlands and worked there back and forth. We moved to France, saw lots of other cool impressionist guys and gals that you've read about, and um, worked with some of them, moved back and forth, did some of that. Another thing that might be neat to know is he was really close to his brother. Tate will like his brother's name. His brother's name was Theo. And they used to write letters back and forth all the time. And they even published his letters. So just if you're thinking about Vincent Van Gogh, it's kind of neat. We have the story of his life writing letters. And now is a great time while you're at home and your communication with people is sometimes just over the phone or via video screen. How neat if they got something you wrote or even better, some of your artwork. So that's kind of a neat fact about him. The other thing that's kind of fun because we see it in here, his favorite color was yellow. He thought yellow was beautiful, that it represented sunlight, it represented light, and it represented God. And it was just something that he would put to aspire in his pieces. So that's really neat to see. Um, he also loved nature. You see trees a lot in his pieces, in his landscape. This is actually a cypress tree. We'll talk about that. But the other thing that we have, because we have his letters, we have all these great quotes. And one of the best quotes for today, and I think it's a really good quote for this whole month, is one of these. And I made a quick little thing to share with you. So for my part, I know nothing with any certainty. Basically saying, I don't know what the day is gonna bring, but the sight of the stars makes me dream. So I want you to think about that tonight. We don't know what's gonna to happen today, but it's gonna be okay, because the stars are gonna come out. They're gonna shine. Even if they're behind the clouds, you know they're there. And that is gonna make you dream big things and dream awesome things. So while we're doing that, we don't know what's gonna happen, but we're gonna be awesome because we're gonna be artists and we're gonna dream big when we see the stars. So on that note, Tate, you wanna come on over here? Does this mean I'm the artist because Theo was... Yeah, this means you're the artist. He has a friend named Theo, so he likes that. So, did you did you want to read our quote? For many part, I know nothing with any certainty, but the sight of stars makes me, makes me dream. Makes me dream. Vincent Van Gogh. That's pretty cool. So, people have asked a lot of questions. This is, what we're doing today is Vincent Van Gogh was known for his really hex heavy textured pieces. He really started that later in his career. 
And normally, if we're in the studio and we were going to do this, we would use acrylic paint and we would use, I love this stuff, impasto medium. See? Impasto. This is a favorite in our art classes. Of course, we have a big giant tub of it because we're an art studio that teaches lots of lessons. But I've got it all sealed up. It's goopy and thick and wonderful and it's fun to play with and Keaton's nodding his head. If you have done one of the art classes with me or Talia's taught to, if you have done one of those or with one of our other teachers and you've used impasto medium, you know how much fun it is. So because I feel most people don't have a giant tub of impasto medium laying around their house, other than maybe me, we're going to create our own medium today. So that's why I asked you to have powder. What you really need is something very fine. So cornstarch, baby powder, talcum powder, whatever you might have in your cabinet. Baking soda works in a pinch. You want some white glue, something that's white. And we're going to start with about a half a cup of, of powder and, a, and one tablespoon of glue. So, And you will need a little water and a plastic spoon. If you don't have a plastic one, you can use a regular spoon. Just wash it off right after because that glue sometimes can, well, you know, glue. Glue can stick to stuff, can it? Yeah. So. I mean, you could be spider man if you glue your hands together. If you glued, well, I don't know about that, but. Um, now, what's neat about this picture is, we're going to look at our picture over here. This is really, the whole emphasis here is on the stars. Remember, they make us dream. So the whole emphasis is on the stars. But you may recognize this if you've been with me on the lessons. Do you remember this piece? Do you remember this artist? Hakusai? Yeah, yeah. Well, they often, remember Japan opened up in the eight to mid 1800s. People are sharing their work back and forth. So Van Gogh would have seen some of these works. So they compare that to this swirling wave to this right here. Do you see? Do you see how these come together? Here, take, move out of the way so they can see, baby. You see this? Isn't that neat when you get to see how different artists come together and make different things? But they always look and they're looking at those details and how to incorporate them. So I'm going to move our great wave over here and we're going to get back to our starry night. We're going to start out by drawing and we're going to lay out some of our elements. Then we're going to come in with paint. Again, if you don't even have watercolor paint or acrylic paint, Feel free to use markers, make your pencil do the lines, that's fine. I always plan these lessons with the thought that I don't know what people might have at home and I don't want to limit you if you don't have something. I still want you to be able to join in and create with us. So are we ready? You have your pencil? No, we, we're going to mix this after we do some painting. I know you're excited to mix it. So the first thing I want to show you, and I'll pull one over here is Van Gogh, we've talked about this, has a horizon line right here. We've got these mountains in the background. So, but notice relationships. You know, remember how with the horse we did our hand? We can almost fit two hands to one. So whatever this space is, so I'm going to go, if I have a section here, a section here, the bottom third of my paper, this is going to represent your paper, is going to be that line. And you can just put a squiggly line right here, just here. It does come up a little bit. It doesn't matter what yours does. We're going to get that squiggly line. And then we're going to spend most of our time talking about here because this is really what this painted. So an important element is we want to make sure we get that moon in there. So we're going to come in here and we're going to draw in a moon. He has a little bit of a crescent moon. You can put a crescent moon in there. Yep. And then go ahead and put a circle around it. Because look at all that light. Yep. Yep. We're, that's okay. We're, we're this, these are just our pencil lines. Now, let's put that great wave in here. Let's that's do... Let's do a big swirly line right here. Can you all see that? Is that dark that enough? Not dark. A little bit darker. Okay. It looks like the great wind. It looks like the great wind. It kind of does look like a great wind. I gotta hold on to my and we'll put that. Let's 
see, we've got that big swirl. We've got another swirl. Do you see another swirl right here? So let's put, we're going to start off of here. Let's put another swirl. You can make that as big as you want to. Yep, just like that. Now, we're going to find those stars. We're going to put them around. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to put different size circles. Just dot your, si your sky with stars. Dot your sky with stars. Some of them can be bigger. So what we've put in is we've got a horizon line right here, it's just a squiggly line. We've got our crescent moon and a circle around it. Then we've got our swirly wave that comes in and another swirly wave that comes in. And then we've got circles spread all around. As many stars as you need to help you dream. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to make what's called concentric circles. That's, those are circles that fit inside of each other. So we're going to draw a circle around one of our circles and then another one. Okay, and then I'm going to repeat that. So a circle and a circle and a circle. In a circle. So we're going to do that to all our stars. Okay. Okay. We're going around each circle, giving it an outer circle and an outer circle. Hey, do you remember the name of our artist today? Vincent Van Gogh. Yeah, Vincent Van Gogh. That's right. Vincent Van Gogh has been in the news a lot this week. Why? So, well, of course it was his birthday. And there's a lot of interest in a painting, too. Everyone loves his work. When have you known him? How long have I known Vincent did you, Van Gogh? Did you, did, is that why you do my birthday on March 30th? Well, I didn't make your birthday on March 30th because of Vincent Van Gogh, but that's a sweet thought, isn't that? No, but you just happened to share a birthday with him. Okay, so now let's do the same thing to the wave that we did with the circles, but we're just going to go underneath. So let's draw another line to the wave, and we're going to follow that. And we're going to follow that around. Yep. And then we're going to come in and do another line and follow it around. Is it starting to look? Do you see? Do you see what's happening? We're starting to get those lines. Can you see, Tate, how it's starting to go? Now we're going to do it to this wave right here. Now I'm going to go over everything again. Okay. Now all this, as you keep going, so remember we're doing three lines around each circle. We're doing three lines on our waves. We've got our moon right here with a big circle around it. We've got all these things. And what's happening is this is a time that Impressionism is really taking the art world by storm, going crazy. Everyone's getting super excited about it. Although some people thought, oh, what are they doing? Why are they making all these crazy lines? And why do we get to see all the breaststrokes? Can you see all the breaststrokes, Tate? Can you see all the breaststrokes in there? Mm-hmm. Yep. So now we have things down here that you've got some light closer to the closer to the village. You've got light moving around here. But what we're going to do is we're going to concentrate on those stars today. So do you remember what Vincent Van Gogh's favorite color was? That 
the yellow. So go ahead and get a brush. Go ahead and get your paints ready. And we're going to put some color in here. We're going to ignore what's going on underneath our horizon right now because we want to focus on this. Okay? We're going to use watercolor because that will dry fast for us so we can show you a little bit. So I'm going to get some yellow, his favorite color. Does that mean it's my favorite color? Well, your favorite color is whatever your favorite color is. You're your own person. You get to have your own things. And I'm going to color my circles in, my center little circles. I'm going to make those yellow. We're going to get all of those. And my moon. I need to get my moon yellow. How's everyone doing? Add a little darker so you can see it a little bit better at home. I think we'll be able to see the stars tonight. It's really sunny here, but it's cold. But I think it's a perfect clear night. So we're going to go out and look at the stars tonight. Maybe you'll get that chance too. Tomorrow? Yeah. Are we going to see the green tree? No, we'll just go outside in our backyard and look up. So we yellow, dark yellow. Good job. Good job. So get this all around the moon right there. So Tate and I are using charcoal because it's able, it's easy for y'all to see at home, but sometimes we get a little smeary here. Okay. You're adding a little bit more. Now we're going to take that yellow and we're going to repeat that around our concentric circles. But this time we're going to do it in little strokes. We don't need to color all of it. We're just going to do it in brushy strokes like that inside our circles just like that with your yellow. Now if you don't have paint use your markers or you can be making these as strokes with your pencil too. You can use colored pencil, crayons, Chalk is great. This actually works. Vincent Van Gogh liked to paint a lot in um, pastels, so there are several pastels. The Impressionists love pastels. Um, I would love to use pastels, so I think I'm going to try and figure out how to do a lesson and incorporate that you could use, use soft pastels and you could use chalk at home um, if you don't happen to have those. So. We do, the, we do a lot of pastels in the studio, but we're lucky here. We've got lots and lots of supplies because I love so, okay, now we're going to, because he liked yellow, we're going to use a little more yellow. So still with yellow on our brush, now we're going to go outside our circles. And we're going to give it dotted lines all the way around, like this. See, Tate, you're getting yours all, getting your yellow all set. Yep. Now, if you don't have watercolors and you want to try it, I posted a recipe a couple weeks ago on Facebook that you can make your own. It takes about three to four days for them to set up, but it's really easy if you happen to have food coloring and, and um, Karo syrup and um, uh, some other few supplies that you probably have around your house, um, you can make your own. And so that's what we made here, but we've used up our yellow already. We need to make some more. So keep going. We're doing those dashes around here. We're really trying to make the light from those stars grow right there. Oops, I, I forgot this star over here. Also not a current events person, and someone knew what happened. Ah, somebody knew. Somebody knew. So maybe I have to tell them now. So on, on Monday, I believe, a painting was stolen of Vincent Van Gogh's from a new museum. However, let me just tell you what happens. When a painting's stolen, it makes the artist extra famous. That's what happened with the Mona Lisa. The Mona Lisa was stolen once, and now 
everybody knows the Mona Lisa. So the scream was stolen. That's another painting. It's a painting by Edvard Monk. It's the one that goes like that. Um, there were several others. Vincent Van Gogh paintings have been stolen before, other sculptures, and usually they find them. So, but that did happen this week. Does it's, the person who stole this painting go to jail, or they just... Oh, oh, they're, they're, we won't worry about them, but, but we'll be sure we're going to get that painting back. Okay, so we will not worry about that too much. I'm going to go around my moon, too, but... I'm very proud of whoever is paying attention to the current events. If you look your head sideways, it's kind of like two eyes with hands in it. It kind of is. Okay, go ahead and start getting water in your blue. We're ready to switch colors. So, Which we're blue? any blue you want. We're going to get some blues. I'm going to hold up our reference again. Do you see what we're creating? We're creating, and we're just trying to stylize this and have a lot of fun with it. We're going to create this. When you're layering in a painting in acrylics, you're always doing your background first and then you're coming to your foreground. So we're getting our sky because that's our emphasis in doing our background. Even if you're working in watercolor like us or in other color pencils, we're doing it the same way. So we've got our blue and we're going to start filling in all this negative space. But I'm going to fill it in with lines that are moving. I don't want to make it solid. I'm going to go around. I'm going to get a little bit darker blue so you can see. I'm going to go around my stars with blue. And see how I'm just making those lines? I'm not worried about solids. I want to have lots of movement here. So. So I'm going to go around everything. Yep. Tate, use a little bit more water, baby. Sometimes you can never have too much water with watercolor. You always need a lot of water. So I'm going, I've almost got all my stars. And I need to go around my wave. Same thing. Yeah, you want me to add some more water to that one? That one's nice, and you can see that one right there. Remember, we're doing our, our waves. And we're going to dash around here. Oh, now you see all these spots in between? Our negative space, there's nothing there. It's, Negative says, well, if you look on here, Vincent Van Gogh has filled all this in. So we're going to continue our lines. And I've left one up so you could see over Tate's while you're doing it so you can have reference. So we're going to continue to fill in the lines and you follow the shape. So if I have kind of a triangle there, I'm going to follow that shape. If I have this shape, I'm going to follow that shape. So we're Filling that in. How's everyone doing? If you like mysteries and art and stolen pieces, there's a really beautiful museum in Boston called the Isabella Gardner Museum. It's gorgeous. It's built to look like uh, an old villa. It has beautiful rooms. It has a wonderful connection. But they had one of the big mysteries in art. They did have a big um, 
robbery. They had a big robbery and several pieces were taken, but nobody knows it. Nobody knows how they did it exactly. And if you go visit the museum today, they've still left the empty frames on the wall because it's one of the great mysteries in art. So it's kind of fun if you, they haven't ever found them, no. They do, but it's like a great, so if you like a mystery, that's a real life mystery. So, um, let's see. Okay, how's all your blue? You wanna fill in some more on your blue? Get that on there. Now, if you happen to have some purple, go ahead and add a little purple, kind of just to, if you don't have purple, you mix red and blue to get your purple. And if you can do that with your markers, you can layer your crayons. And we're going to add some to our wave. We're just going to add some in there to give us some depth and volume here. And you can add that purple anywhere you want to. I'm going to add some to my wave. I'm going to keep moving those lines all around. Got enough there, babe? get some movement. Okay, so tight. We're going to go ahead and let's fill in. Now we're going to fill this in and then we're going to whip up our impasto medium. I'm going to show you some of the things. So down here there's a little village. Can you see there's a, is there glare on there Keaton? Can you see? Um, there's a little church. You see that Tate? You want to point it on your picture? There's a little steeple, there's little houses, there's little hills, and there's the big cypress tree. We're going to use, um, we're going to put in the hills, we're going to put those in, and then we're just going to use black silhouettes today to fill in. So go ahead and get um, one of your colors of blue, and we're just going to give ourselves a solid line right here. We're just going to fill in this bottom part of our paper. Yep, just go across. Go ahead and get that landscape. We're gonna give it some ground here. Yep, just go ahead and fill it all the way in. Well, what about the tree? Oh, well the tree is dark, so we're gonna layer the tree on top. Now, if we were using the regular impasto medium, we would actually be painting this mixed in with our acrylic paints while we're actually creating these. Because we don't have the actual impasto medium, we're gonna layer it on top. So, here you go, Tate. Go ahead and fill it in. We've got our Got our ground. I'll let everybody catch up and go ahead and fill that in. So there are other paintings. This is not the only one that Van Gogh did a night sky. There are some other paintings you can look up. Um, if you want to look up about his images, um, you can see some of his other artwork. He also did like to use a lot of portraits and he loved sunflowers. But what color are sunflowers, Tate? Yellow. Yellow. Of course, yeah, yellow. So, okay, I'm gonna get yours blue. So everybody, if you've just joined us, we've got our waves in the sky. We've got our stars and our circles and our concentric circles. We've got our landscape down here. We've got our moon. Okay, how's everyone doing? We good? Now I'm going to use black. If you don't have black, use the darkest color you have. When you are working in building in paints, in acrylic paints, you can layer your background, which would be our sky, and then you can put these on top. Normally in watercolor we might do something a little differently, but we're going to just, you can put that right on top. If you don't, if your watercolor is not dark enough, you can come back in with black markers, crayon, something to make this nice and dark, and then we're going to put a silhouette in down here. So your silhouette can look like however you want it to. A silhouette is the shape of something highlighted from behind. Highlighted. So, 
Like if someone could come into anything? No, no. What it is is it's if the light comes from behind. So I'm going to add in with my brush this. I want you to take your black and I want you to do this wiggly shape that comes up over your piece. So I'm going to have to get a whole bunch of black. So we've well, got to use charcoal. We could use charcoal, but I want to show them how to use paint at home, don't you? There is a lot of green in the actual painting in this one, but we're going to put that silhouette right over. See how we layer that right on top? And there's kind of a second one right there. I'm just doing that as dark as I can on here. Keaton, am I getting a lot of glare? Uh -uh. It's good. Keep going. See how that pushes the sky right there? Pushes that behind it because the sky is so bright. If I was standing in front of the tree, the tree, the tree would look very dark because the sky is so bright. However your cypress tree looks, wiggly, he's got all, it's really wide down here. He's got all sorts of fluff and swirls and, okay, so we have our cypress tree and we're almost to the impasto. So now we're going to put a little silhouette of a village. So what you want to do is I'm going to put a little church in there. But just keeping in a silhouette. Do we not have white? White? We do have white. No, I'm ready for black. And I'm just going to put some boxes, some squares, so we look like we have some other houses. You can put some shapes there. We're going to keep it pretty simple because we want to get into making our impasto medium. And the nice thing is we painted first, so this will give our paint a little time, just a few minutes to set up while we're mixing our impasto. So, so you're just putting in, you can put in your little steeple right here. You can put in, you can put a little house over here. You're just going to put your houses or your whatever you want. If you have a house that has, you know, a big tall roof, put your house in there. You can be here too, looking up at the stars at night. Yep. Come along that bottom there. You want to use a bigger brush? That'll fill that in. So I'm going to let you do that. Now I'm going to move Mr. Van Gogh over here. So you keep adding in your Black silhouettes on top. Great job, Tate. And we're going to let Tate. And then now you can get your items set up. So I'll give everyone a minute. Hang on. we got to give everyone a minute because they might be filling their silhouettes. Hey, will you go color in your church but silhouette right there for me with black and get that? Good job. Good job. And what are they getting together again? Okay, so they have, what you're going to want to get together is a half a cup of baby powder. And these are very relaxed uh, measurements because you're going to see when you mix it, you have to add a little bit, take a little bit. And then, yep, that's glue. I have about a tablespoon of white glue. And I just put mine in, I went ahead and put my baby powder in here already. And... Um, I have plastic spoons, which you are going to need, and have a little water handy. So, and your baby powder should be very fine. You can use cornstarch, um, baking soda in a pinch. What you want is something that's very, very fine. What happens is if you have white paint, just so you know, with these same ingredients, if you take the powder and the glue and white paint, you can mix your own gesso. 
Gesso is a ground, a white, which is like kind of a fancy word for a prep paint, um, that if you go to the store and you buy a canvas and it's white, it has gesso on it. So that's a, uh, that's a way you can make your own gesso. So if you want to try that this afternoon, you can do that. But I wasn't sure people would have white paint at home, so we are going to do it just this way. So go ahead and put your baby powder into your bowl or your plate. And then Tate, if you will dump the glue out, you might need, yeah, kind of swirl it all around. And you might get a spoon and get as much out of there as you can. I had measured this out into this dish. Don't worry, you can guess too. Okay, now let me show you something when we mix this up. When you start combining it, it's going to look like it can't combine. Okay, see what happens? It looks like it's not mixing. But you're going to keep moving it around. Now, be careful because if you fling it around, powder goes everywhere. So you're going to keep moving that glue around. Keep going. So I'm using the bottom of my spoon. I'm going to get some of that glue off. Okay. Very gently. You're going to keep moving it around. Okay. It's kind of hard. You see where it's starting to get sticky yeah. in there? I know. I know. It just gets everywhere. You're going to keep going. And it's white. I know it's hard to see, guys. It'll start clumping a little bit. Mine is going so far. I'm going to add a little bit of water, like a splash. You're going to see this. Like a splash. That's just going to help it start sticking. We used baby powder, so it smells like... Mm -hmm. Keep going. But you have to do it very gently because that powder wants to go everywhere, doesn't it? Yeah, it's glue and powder. Oh, we're starting to get there. Okay. Okay, here we go. Let me do, could jump in there. Okay, so I'm going to add just a touch of water again to about a crumbly bit right now. Okay, you see the crumbly bit? That's I need it runnier than that. So I'm going to add I'm going to add just a bit of water, just a tiny bit, and let's see if that does it. Nope, that's not going to be enough, but. Yep, a little more water. You want to make sure you, you need that glue in there to hold it together. I might have put too much water in there. More glue? No. Nope. More powder? No, nope, but I think this is going to be perfect, actually. Do we use our hands? Then? No, we don't use our hands. Do you want to use your hands? <laughs> no, 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 don't use your hands yet. Gretchen asked, is it supposed to look a little bit like Yes, Gretchen, that is a perfect analogy. It should look a little bit like slime. See how it's still a little tough right here? So I'm going to add a little bit more water, and it's going to get to, you want it like really thick slime, but we're just, okay, can you move, can you mix all that together? I want to use my hands. No, don't use your hands right now. Yeah. yeah. I have broken a spoon doing that before because sometimes it gets too tough. <laughs> That's why I said use a plastic spoon, but you'll see also why we need a plastic spoon. Oh, it's looking really good. You really want to use your hands? Oh, I think that's about perfect. Can I can I feel it? Let me. Oh no 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 no! Don't use your hands. Up, oh, up. Oh. We need a little bit more because it's almost there. Just yeah, just a hair, just a hair. Oh, you want me to do it? Okay. I'm just going to get a little bit more in there. Oh, I probably put too much. If not, if I put too much, we'll put some. Okay. Oh, there we go. There we go. We're getting it. It looks like glue. It looks like glue. How's everyone doing on their mixing? It's hard. It should kind of feel a lot of of resistance to you a lot more than you think. You almost think it's like that oobleck stuff where 
Yeah. Oh, this is perfect, Tate. This is perfect. Okay. So, no. So you should be able to stir it a little bit. It should be able to run, but it should still feel a lot of resistance to you. Okay, we may, hang on, we're mixing. We gotta get this over here. Okay, you keep stirring. So I wanna show you, we're going to, okay, okay, hang on, we're good. So Tate and I are gonna do this on our drawings. What you can do at any time is you could add, yeah, go ahead and come on up. You could add paint to this, acrylic paint. You can't add watercolor. Um, I've never tried food coloring, but that's, a, that's like a dye, so that should work. But acrylic paint, actually, when we're adding the water in, that's representing when you would add acrylic paint. So if you had that, you can do this in any color. So you could add this to your blue, and you could do your blue on here. Why can you, you could not use your hand? Well, because we're going to need to put this on our, because right now we're going to have to put on our picture, and it, it's, we don't have time to wash our hands because we're live on camera. See how that works. Okay, so. What should they do if it has a clay-like consistency? Add a little water to it. I'm going to let everyone keep mixing. Okay, Tate, we're good. Don't both of us get a teaspoon of tea? Well, I'm going to show you what to do. And, and yours and, than mine. Oh, yours looks great. Yours looks great. Look, I can see all the movement and the, oh, oh, that didn't get any yellow right uh, there. Can you add some yellow to that for me? Yes, because you're going to see it's very important. And it's, it's Van Gogh's favorite color. <laughs> okay. So, at any time, you can add a little more powder. You can add a little more water. I tend to not add a lot of glue. The glue is going to help bond it to the paper. But I don't want a ton of glue in there. Um... So that's what a lot of people will put a lot of glue in there and, and then it just ends up becoming a bit much. So we're going to use our spoons as paint brushes and we're actually going to come and we're going to impasto around, around and I'm picking it up on the back of my spoon. You see how I'm doing that? And I'm it's a little harder for us because we're vertical. And you're going to paint it around your stars like this. And it should be pretty goopy on there. Okay. We're going to go around our stars. And you're still doing those movements. But I put it on the bottom of my spoon like that. And I put it around. Now, Tate, another way you can do it. Let me show you this. Hang on, baby. Okay. I know. You want to wipe your hand? You can also use... Kate, will you run and get another plastic utensil for me? I think Tate's going to need it. Um, you can also use the tip right here. So... Let me show. Like hardening. It's harder than you think it is. Yeah. Look how quickly it hardened. I know. So let me show you. Let me show you how to do it. You can take right here, use the end of your plastic utensil, and do the same thing. You can paint it on with there. So the bottom of your spoon, why don't you do that, and then that way, yep, there you go. Just tap it off. But Tate was noticing how fast it dried on his hands. That's because there's very little glue, and it's mostly powder. If you notice, when you paint back over it, you can get some big clumpy clumps kind of getting that starry sky. So we're going to go around, and I'm going to let Tate keep going. I'm going to show... Uh-oh, we just dropped our impasto medium. I'm going to show you what it looks like. Can you see that on camera? That's okay. Just keep going. Keep putting on yours. What it looks like... Here I did a little sample with some earlier on. Can you tell that texture, Keaton? Can you tell that texture? This is what it will look like when it dries. So... When you put it on any of those strokes you're putting on, will end up doing that. And you'll get that actual starry night feel that we have right here. You can also come back afterwards with your paint 
and you can add paint right on top like that. Messy. I know it does. Here, how about you give it to me and we'll put it right here. It's a little hard for us to do it up there, but Tate, you can do it. I painted a quick one earlier today. Do you want to put it on there so you put it down? You can show them how it's done. Here, well, I'll show them on this one, Keaton. You want to lower it and we'll show them real quickly and then we're going to let them keep finishing with this and be done. So I'm just going to take it around. See how I'm moving it around? And it is going to dry with a chalky white texture just like these right here. And we're going to put that all around our stars. Because what we want to emphasize, we're not going to cover the center of the star if possible. We're going to go all the way around. And when you get done, you're going to let it completely dry, which is going to dry faster than you think. It should be dry in about an hour. And you're going to end up, it's much easier if I don't have to do it on a vertical surface. And you're going to see some of that yellow behind that you had. But you're going to go around and you're going to do this to all your stars. And when they dry, you're going to have all that beautiful texture that Van Gogh had in his pieces. I want, I've always wanted to walk up in the museum and touch it, but don't do that. Don't do that. You get in big trouble to touch the paintings. Don't touch the paintings. But when you actually see all this texture, you're putting that into your pieces. You're doing that impasto texture into your pieces as it goes around and around. Look, it's almost drying right there. You can still add color to it. You can, if you have acrylic paint, mix some paint with this. It will end up being so fun to play with. And the nice thing is if you do it in a disposable, we can just, when we're done with this, we can throw it away. It's all clean. Um, on that note, I want to let you, you keep finishing your pieces. I think that's going to cover us on Van Gogh today. Um, he is a really fun artist. He has lots of work that is fun to look at and think about how you could paint it. Um, I want to remind you that we have something on Friday that I asked you to save. And um, let me grab that. So if you have any meat trays or fruit trays or anything that, this one I think had corn on it, you want to make sure you wash them and sanitize them. And then you're just going to cut off the edges. So where it's raised right here, you're just going to get a flat sheet. And don't worry, I'll show you how to do that in class two if you don't have them. But parents, I want to let you know ahead of time just in case you want to make sure that's cut beforehand. But we're going to use these on Friday, so just make sure you have something like that. You just need something that's a sheet of styrofoam. Also put on a chopstick or a skewer. All you need is something that's going to be able to make a mark. Um, into the styrofoam. So if you have a very sharp pencil, that will work. Something that has a tip that is not a blade, but will be able to make a mark in the styrofoam. And I think that's it. I think we're done. Tate, you did an awesome job. I know you did an awesome job too. I want you to remember, go out and look at the stars tonight, just in Vincent Van Gogh's words. For my part, I know nothing with any certainty but the sight of the stars makes me dream. Art is man's nature. Nature is God's art. See you tomorrow, guys.